What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're going to go kind of back to some real basics. Or for some people, we may just explain some things that you already kind of knew from the act of doing it. You just never understood why. We're going to talk about why a long track base and a bigger dozer makes for easier grading. It's kind of counterintuitive. You would think the smaller the dozer that that the more agile it's going to be and the easier it's going to be to grade with. But if you've ever run a dozer, you very quickly dispel that myth. The shorter the track base, the more difficult to grade. Why is that? Today we're going to the top down view so that we can draw some pictures and use our little die cast models to demonstrate the concept of why this works the way that it does. So we're going to simulate with our little die cast D5K sideways because that's just how we're going to roll today. We're going to simulate what it's like when you're grading. So as anyone who has ever run a dozer knows, and we're going to go back to my front on view here, when you start dozing, everyone wants to put that blade down and just go straight because that's how dozers work, right? If you put the blade at a level, then it's just going to carry that level. Well, the problem is if my blade goes down, it's going to start to dig and I'm going to track along, track along, track along until my tracks hit that dip that I just made and then I'm going to start to dive. Well, what's my blade doing when I start to dive with my tracks? It's going down deeper, which means I'm now creating a ramp and we're going to draw this really quick on some scrap piece of paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to track along and our blade's going to make, oh, there's a dip and then, oh, it's exponential. We're going to start to really dig. So you're creating a ramp by leaving your blade totally in the same spot, not adjusting your blade at all. Similarly, let's go back to the front view. If we raise our blade up while we're carrying some material, you're going to start to ramp. And then as you ramp, what's my blade doing? It's going up higher. Now what we've done is we've created the inverse. We're going along. Oh, and oh my gosh. Now we've got a ramp. So the way we compensate for this Again, if you've ever run a dozer, you know very quickly, is you got to be really active on the handle. This blade is constantly being adjusted and tweaked. I'll, I'll flip over to a quick view of my hands cam in the dozer so you can see just how active your hands are while you're grading in a dozer. It's a really, really big deal that you got to be active. So now, all of that, what's that have to do with the track base, Brian? Where are you going with this? Well, let's look at here. So let's say we are relatively new, relatively green to being in a dozer. And we go along and we have our grade and we're doing all right. Oh, there's a little hoopty and oh, there's a little, oh, oh well, there's a little hoopty. Oh, there's a little hoopty. That's our grade. If you can imagine, and I'm going to try to nail this from the top down view, we're going to create it a little dramatic. So as we're coming along in our dozer, we're going to hit this little hoopty here in the beginning and it's going to pitch our tracks up as well as our dozer blade. Well, we immediately adjust and we create a little divot. And then as we come over this hoopty, our blade is going to pitch down again. And then as we come back, it's going to pitch back up and up and down and back up again. And so you can see that this track base, whew, man, we've, we've got some real big hoopties in here and it's causing us some issue with grading. Now, as a really good operator, you can absolutely gauge the feedback within your ass and you can be adjusting on the fly with your blade. And what will happen is this will come out the back of the dozer as a relatively smooth pass. As a rookie, this right here is going to really send you for a whirl because your hands aren't used to keeping up. Now, why does the track base make a difference? If you notice with this short track base, as I'm coming along, the dozer's going to lift up. And then once I get to this teetering point right in the middle, I'm going to slam back down because now we're past, we're past the pivot point and my dozer is going to start pitching down and I have to compensate with that for the blade. Similarly, when we get over here, I'm going to pitch up and then because my track base will span these two little hoopties here, hopefully I can, I'm going to pull my tracks up so that you can see it. Because I'll span these hoopties, I'm not actually going to dip so much on these. I might get a little bit of a dip as my track crests the first one, but pretty quick I'm going to hit that second hoopty. And so I'll actually kind of level out on them for a second until I get past this one. And then I'm going to pitch back down again. Now, I don't have a bigger dozer die cast model. I apologize. So instead, we're going to use this lovely SK500 that Cabelco lovingly sent to me. Thank you so much, Cabelco. I appreciate it. We're going to simulate this bad boy as a giant dozer with a giant long track base. So let's say this was a D5, true. Let's say this is a D11, 
Like we're just going for the mama badass dozer so that we can demonstrate. Well, now what's going to happen as we come over this is first of all, you have substantially more weight with this dozer. Again, we're pretending this is a dozer, not an excavator. Bear with me, guys. So it's actually going to take some of that hoopty and smash it down. So instead of pitching up like crazy, I may get just a little bit of a pitch. Well, as a rookie operator, that's really easy to adjust on the fly with my hand. No problem. But then what's going to happen as we crest over and you start to top out, notice our track base. I'm bridging these two hoopties. Actually, I'm really bridging three of these hoopties. And as I continue to track forward, I'm continuing to bridge all of the hoopties. Well, now all of a sudden, instead of getting this wild bucking and pitching that we were getting with our little D5, now once I kind of crest this first hoopty, we're going to go up a little, and then we're going to be able to ride pretty smooth across the top of those hoopties. Well, guess what that means? That means I get to be way less active with my dozer hand because my track base is staying much more stable. And guess what that means? The less inputs I'm doing on my blade, the less of the hoopties we're creating. And so by having that longer track base, bridge some of those hoopties so that we're not getting the crazy wild bucking and pitching. That means this hand, my, my operator hand on my right that's running my blade, can be much slower, much smoother, much softer, which further smooths the grade. So we ultimately get a smoother grade because of the fact that we're not bucking and pitching and we don't have to put as many control inputs into the blade as we were with the smaller dozer. So that is a very quick, silly way of demonstrating why hoopties make such a difference on a small dozer and they don't in a big dozer. And that's why someone who is a beautiful finesse finish grader on a D6 or a D8 or a D11, you can put down grade smooth as glass. You throw them in a D3 or a D5 and it's going to look like their first day on the job for a little bit. And that is why it is harder to grade in a smaller dozer than it is a big dozer. And on that note, if you are starting out your career in a D3, D4, D5, don't get discouraged. Any dozer is frustrating at first, but especially if you're starting one with a super short track base, that's extremely frustrating. But now that you understand why, rest assured that if you can learn how to grade in a D3, you can grade no problem in a D6, in a D8, in a D9, in a D11. It doesn't matter because the longer the track base, the easier my job gets. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's helped you understand a little of the dynamics that are happening on the job site. Absolutely feel free to reach out in the comments and we'll catch you on the next Down and Dirty.